Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about design, uh, UI, UX, and wireframing. And this is important because when you're making websites, we all do, we want them to look pretty, we want them to be easy to interact with. So let's just begin by talking about what UI and UX is. Um, these two terms are often kind of thrown around when we talk about design. Um, but UX and UI are not the same thing. UI refers to the visual parts of your website, um, such as color of the website, the fonts, the layout, et cetera. And UX, on the other hand, refers to how a user's experience or interact with your website. So this could be things like response time, um, if your page is easy to navigate, um, and if the website kind of does what the user expects, stuff like that. <laughs> So yeah, this this uh, graphic here just kind of shows a little bit more about what each side of UX and UI is about. Uh, we're just going to begin by talking about user interface, the UI part. Um, so we're going to look at this one example. It was a student project uh, from the past called Interstellar, and much like your code, your designs will be iterative. This is their first version, the version zero. It was all on paper, which is completely fine for a version where you're just starting off. It doesn't look the best, but it, it's you can come up with. It's like really fast to sketch something on paper and you can make a lot of, you know, a lot of versions of it like this. So this is what it looked like originally. Then they coded it up and it looked something like this. Um, it looks okay. It has some stuff to get, you know, be worked on like for example we got all this content over here to the left and it's not really organized or anything all the fonts are different sizes um there's a lot of white space and you got some kind of like strange reading going on up here um but you know for a first coded up version it's not bad this is actually very it can be very useful for testing out the integration with your front end and back end just to make sure that things are working there Next up, uh, second version. It's looking a little better. Um, definitely looks a little more clean. And you can kind of see how you would be using this website. You got a big search bar here, and you got these buttons down here that you could probably interact with. So that's good. But it can still use some work. Uh, next up, this one was designed in Figma, which we'll talk about later in this lecture. Um, but it does start to look a little cleaner, um, a little more legible. There's like Different sections here. You've got this um, kind of like menu over here to the left. You can kind of see this now bar going up in the top. So it's getting better. And then supposedly the final version, it looks something like this, which looks pretty modern. You know, you kind of see some sort of layout like this on your Google page um, with a very defined navigation menu over to the left and different parts of the website. But it looks a lot better now. Um, but yeah, the, your design will go through different steps like this, and that's completely fine. Um, you'll want to just keep updating it as you go. Here's another example. This one's uh, from Gather. Some of you guys might have used this over COVID. Um, there's like the first version. It's not bad. Um, there's a lot of white space though, and you know maybe the middle part could be a little bit bigger because that's the main focus of the website. Later on, it got a little better. Um, they definitely made the the thing that you interact with the most really big, which is nice. And you kind of got like a chat over here, um, and like a contact list on the left. And the most up to date one looks pretty modern. It looks like kind of what you would expect Discord to look like or something over there on the left, with that dark theme, all the rounded uh, buttons and stuff like that. So. Here's a better example, or not a better example, but a maybe more relevant example. The MIT website in 2003 looked like this. And that's kind of what WebSys still looks like, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, if you look at the MIT website from 2019, that's what it looks like. It's a lot better, a little bit more approachable to you know, something like that. Um, so yeah, UI refers to things like fonts, colors, um, shapes. Um, if you noticed, uh, let's see what's a good example. 
like here. Um, by shape, you can look at the buttons, they're all pretty rounded, like how we talked about border radius in the previous lecture. Um, stuff like that. You know, sharp corners might, depending on your design, might not be desirable. They might be sometimes, but tend, they tend to be rounded uh, these days. Um, so moving on to the design trends. And so design changes over time. UI has trends that come and go. This is kind of like from the 2000s with your early iOS, Windows 7, and like the Xbox 360 menu up there. They all kind of have like this somewhat glassy, very realistic look to them. Um, and if you compare to something that you would see now on your iPhone, it's very flat, very clean. And this is kind of like the trend currently with UI. Um, here's a YouTube website from the early 2000s and the YouTube website in a more modern era. Uh, same thing here. You can see that the new YouTube website is a lot more flat. There's not all these like gradients going on that you would see in all these buttons from early YouTube. And just keeping track of the UI trends and how they change over time is useful because it'll make your website seem more approachable to users. Um, if like, for example, YouTube never updated their website and that's still what it looked like today, some people might just be a little apprehensive about using it. It just looks out of touch, looks out of date. And it's not really what we're used to anymore when looking at uh, you know, a modern website. So yeah, just keep up to date with this popular comment, helps your designs look more approachable. So we're gonna run through like a step-by-step -step example of how we make a component look good. Um, so here we got like a, looks like a login form with, you know, you enter your email and password. Um, but we stack them vertically, that's really maybe more of what we're used to with, you know, more modern login forums like on Facebook, or you'll have them stack like that. We can improve it um, by changing the color of the background to make the form pop out a little bit, which I'm actually not sure why you can't see it on the screen, but there should be a green background here. That's uh, strange. It's probably just the projector, but um, it gets a little better in the next slide where we add a drop shadow here. So you can kind of see where the border of this form would be. And it's starting to make a little bit more sense as to like where this thing exists on the site. We also added some rounded corners from before, as you can see. Well, I guess you can't really because the border is not there, but now we have some rounded uh, corners down there. Next up, we put some padding here on the fields. Um, so right here, the email and password, if you were to put some text in them, it would be very cramped. So, you know, we just kind of expand those a little bit. It has a little bit more room to breathe, so that's nice. Um, and then finally, just changing up that button down there. It doesn't look very stylized right now, but if we maybe, you know, maybe make it a different color, give it some rounded corners, it uh, kind of indicates to the user that this is something you want to interact with and it just looks a lot more clean. So that's maybe, you know, an example of how you could go from something that's bare bones, like an input field and a button, and with some CSS and layout changes, you could get something that looks like that. And that's probably what you would want to be able to, you know, do on your websites to make them a little bit more approachable. Yeah, so there they are side by side. Okay, responsive design. Um, so you want to make sure that your website is able to fit different screens of different aspect ratios, uh, especially now when there's a lot of people like visiting your website on your phone. Um, if you code your website up to be the exact same size as your laptop screen, um, and it just doesn't respond well to it, if you change that window size or if somebody looks at it on their phone, it might just not be a very good experience to the user. Um, it might also not look the way that it looks to you on your own laptop. So to you, it might look perfect, but if somebody has like a maybe like a 13 inch and you're working on a 16 inch, it would just not be the same design. You wanna make sure that you know it translates over to different screens. Um, so to check, you could open your website on your phone. You could also resize your browser window. That should resize your website. Um, and using inspect element to kind of check those things is very useful for when working on responsive design.
All right, so we're going to talk a little more about the UX side of things now. Um, UI is visual stuff that you can see and impacts the aesthetics and look of your website. The user experience is more about how people will be interacting with it. So this isn't a website, but it is an example of user experience. Um, this ketchup button on the left is made out of glass, and it's got kind of like this nice little sticker at the top that looks like a ribbon. You know, the look of it is pretty good compared to the plastic one. The glass just looks a little better. But when it comes to user experience, it's a lot more painful to use this ketchup bottle than the plastic one here to the right. You know, with that glass one, you would have to turn it upside down and then like bump the top of it to get the ketchup to come out. The rest of this uh, plastic, we just squeeze it. Very easy to use, even though it might not look as fancy as this one on the left. This one provides users with a better experience. And at the end of the day, people will probably want to be using that plastic one more. Here's another example. Um, there's some what are they, like parking signs in LA. If you were to like try to figure out where, if you could park in somewhere by using all these signs to the left, it would take you a while. You know, it's like kind of got some messages that might look contradicting at first. It's like no parking anytime, but it's been talking to the one hour parking. Um, so, you know, it's a little confusing. But this one to the right, this one to the right kind of just makes it a lot easier for people to read. Um, you would just have to figure out what the day it was. Like if it was a Thursday, 5 p.m. You just go here, Monday through Friday, and then between four to seven, it looks like you can park for an hour. So user experience on that one's a lot better. Another example is like this transit machine. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that seemed like they were just pushed together and they didn't really think about too much about how somebody would actually use this machine. Um, and these big like one, two, and three numbers are very telling that um, they're trying to explain to you how to use this machine, which means that the design itself isn't intuitive. And that's just kind of a sign that if you have to explicitly tell people how to use your website, it, you might want to make the design a little bit more intuitive and easier to grasp. Just another one. Um, doesn't look as good, but maybe the user experience on these TV remotes is better than if you just had some buttons that didn't work. Here's a website with just a bunch of stuff going on. Don't do this. Uh, make sure your websites are structured and they don't just have a bunch of different sections with a bunch of like bright text and stuff because you know most people if they navigate to the site they would just have like no idea what to do. Here's a good example of um, a good UX. It gives the users two options. So you know to a user that just if you happen to come up onto this website, you know, easy description here, and then you either download it or open Discord in your browser. There's not much confusion here. Then there's a nav bar at the top, kind of tells you where you can go on the website. Um, a lot better to use than you know something like that. Um, here's the Airbnb website from I'm not really sure, maybe I would say like 2010s, maybe. Um, it's not the worst, you know, you, you kind of got like a prompt here where you're going, but if you look at the nav bar on the top, there's not really much happening. You can like sign up, sign in, it says they're hiring, how it works, but there's not much, um, it doesn't really show you how to use this website. Whereas if you go to Airbnb now, they got this very useful kind of like rounded menu at the top, where they're asking you where you're going, you know, what days you want to be there, how many guests you have, and a search button. It's pretty clear on how you would use this. So another example of good UX design. Uh, same with the Facebook website from the past. You kind of have this overwhelming create an account menu. And now it's just pretty simple. You log in, and if you don't have an account, you just create a new account. This is just another example of how you know, UX might have improved with Google from back then to the more modern version of it. Okay, so next up, we're going to talk about wireframing. Um, wireframing is just a way to represent the skeleton um, or a blueprint of your website visually. Uh, we saw this paper drawing before in one of the earlier slides. And this is an example of wireframing. 
it is just the way for you to kind of plan out the structure of your site so that you can maybe brainstorm on it or have different variations of what you think you would want to do. It's easy for you to show it to people, get some feedback or input before you go up and code it all up because that's going to take some time. So this is very good for like the planning stage. And wireframes can come in different types of um, different types of forms. For example, one of the paper is this one on Figma over here. They're very different, but they're both wireframes. That, that would be like considered like a low fidelity wireframe. This one's like a high fidelity one. And just depending on what your use case is, you might want to go with one or the other. Um, but it should be drafty. That's the main point of it. It's a very much planning stage type of thing. Here's another kind of wireframe that you can do. It's somewhere in between like a paper sketch and having a figment design, a little bit more, um, you know, have more details to it. Um, like you might be able to give this to an engineer, they might kind of be able to give you something. But anyways, how to make a wireframe, you can use Figma. Um, Google Slides can be used as well. They have the different shapes that you can draw. If you would want to do something a bit more rough drafty, pen and papers are completely fine in the early stages when you're just brainstorming, coming up with a ton of ideas and you don't want to waste too much time. Um, or any wireframe software, Photoshop, Adobe Sketch, um, stuff like that. But on this class, we're going to be focusing with, uh, on Figma. This is the industry standard at the, at the time for wireframing and designing user interfaces. Um, it's very powerful. There's a lot you can do with it. Uh, there's a lot of very good sharing features that will be useful for you guys when, with your teammates, and you guys can all like collaborate on it at the same time. Um, and let's see if I can give you guys a demo of uh, of Figma. And let me just share my screen to something else. Actually, this might be fine. Cool. So this is what Figma would look like if you were, uh, if somebody were to share this link to you, um, you can go in there and look at their design. This is a very rough draft of some sort of Twitter app where you have all these posts and, you know, like a reaction thing with some comment section here. And as you can see, this user here laid it out where you have a home view and then they kind of have like a path where they would imagine the user goes. So if you scroll to the right, here you got this cursor and it's going over here, this button, clicking the button and then, you know, that's what the button would look like once it's pressed. And these are things that you might want to be thinking about and Figma is very useful for it because you can just copy and paste all these screens and change little things on it and then have like these paths where you can uh, picture yourself where the user would want to go on your site, and you can somewhat test user experience before you actually go and code it up. Um, down here, you can see the they planned out how a user would access the comments. Just like click on the comments button here, would pop up the comments section, and then just click this button and go back to the timeline. And yeah, so that's one example. There, there's a a little bit more of a complete design on this other example. This one looks more fleshed out. Um, as you can see, it's it's kind of got like all these colors going on. It's definitely like more what you would expect from an app if you were to open it on your iPhone. So, you know, again, this user here created a bunch of pages for all the different parts of his app and how they would want it to be laid out for a user. And you would want to do this on your websites as well. You know, create all these little drafts or wireframes about each page. And you can have multiple variations of it. It's very good for planning. And we will have a lecture on that uh, further in the course. Let me see if I can show you guys how the editor works.
All right, so I think I think Zoom should be able to see this, but so if I were in editor mode, um, I can come over here and if I was interested in maybe this page of the app, there's a lot of stuff that I can look into, like the the color codes, the size of everything. There's a very useful tab over here, inspect, where if you go over here, you can see um, it's got some CSS for specific parts. So if I wanted to maybe look at the CSS of this signing with Google button, it would give it to me over here. Um, and you can also change it to iOS or Android if you're developing on those ever. Um, but this is very useful for transferring your designs over to your code once you're ready for that step. Um, but yeah, as you can see, here's like some other user um, working on the same sheet as I am. And you will be able to set up like a project with whoever's on your team and have all of you guys working on it at the same time. You can leave comments, which is really nice. And there's just a lot of different um, collaboration tools that you can use with Bing. So you guys should have a good time using that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the UI UX lecture. Um, and yeah, thank you. Yeah, so thank you everyone for coming for day one. Um, that's all we have to answer today uh, for lectures. Um, so if you have any questions about any content or